Welcome back to Taxes Made Simple. We are here in Miami continuing our networking and I'm visiting one of my clients, Colin Usrin. One of the things I love about Colin, he's heavy into crypto. One thing I need to know about him is why he doesn't believe in coins. Let's find out. Who's there? It's Carlton. No way. Your tax How are you doing, bro? I love it. I love it. Tell yeah, me you, a little bit about this. Yeah, do you have any coins? No, no, no. I left them downstairs in the Uber. Okay, thank God. Mike, you too? Hey. Let me see your wallet. <laughs> <laughs> Come on in, boys. All right. Carlton just owns Ethereum, I think, so we'll let us <laughs> This is the Miami spot. This Hello. is it, boys. Good morning. Hello. How's it going, Carlton? How are you? Hello, Emmy. Nice to meet you. Yeah, it's good to see you. Gosh, Gosh. yeah, this is awesome. Is this your place? Yes, sir. I was just about to make some coffee. You uh, you want some? Let's do it. Is this a part of the Oh, this is a part of the routine. ritual? So this is after, actually, the routine. I, I like to do my coffee after so I can have a clear mind through meditation. Because when I drink caffeine before, your thoughts start going a little more sporadic. So yeah. I try to cut it off until I'm completely done, and then this is my reward. Oh. After my breath work, after meditation, after journaling, then I do coffee. Oh, this is Symbiotica. This is one of the best uh, brands that I find with supplements for, this one's magnesium. So magnesium, usually your body, it's hard for your body to actually absorb the magnesium in yeah. like a capsule. This goes straight to the brain. Okay. So this is uh, liquid magnesium. And then we use Bulletproof Coffee. Wow. I'm sure you guys probably heard of this. Bulletproof. It's just or very organic um, and uh, it's, it, it's processed a little better through your bloodstream and then what you do is you mix it with this creamer and this creamer is grass-fed butter with mct oil okay so it breaks down the coffee immediately helps you absorb it and gives it a longer lasting feeling not all right away you know when yeah. you drink coffee sometimes you hammer it down and you're like get the jitter this is just more constant sustained easy, energy sustained energy exactly okay so you do this with one of these it seems like when i first met you like, and I'm not even kidding, yeah. you are super focused on wealth building. And since now that I've gotten to know you, I'm actually starting to learn a little bit more that you're more focused too on just living longer. Yeah. yeah. That like, that is like equally as strong for you in your life of what you care about. It's, it's everything, man. I, I just realized the more I invested in my health, the more money I made. It was a direct correlation. I don't know how, wow. but every dollar I spent into, I have a trainer, I pay two grand a month. I go to a nice gym. Um, you know, I have all the stuff I'm about to show you in there. I have all the supplements I'm taking. My diet, carnivorous diet, I invested a ton of money and energy and time learning what is the best diet for me, what's gonna make me feel the most energetic, and um, you know, all of that stuff has just directly impacted how efficient and how smart I'm working. Yeah. I don't work hard at all. Mm -hmm. I work four hours a day. And you know, just from being able to work smart and utilize the 80-20 rule, what 20% of the things can I focus on that's gonna produce me 80% of my results yeah. instead of doing the opposite? I focus on my health, I make sure my brain's right, I make sure I'm happy as hell, because happiness comes first, then you attract all the success. People think you get the success and you become happy. That's what they think. Yeah. They think, oh, if I just make a little bit more money, if I just have this amount in my it's bank the account. Opposite. It's the opposite. So you gotta be happy first, and you're about to be real happy after Thank you try you, brother. That. Give that a, a sip -a -roo. It's like a milkshake. Yeah, it's like nice. <laughs> it's like Milky. Nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You like it? Yeah, it's good. Oh yeah. So how would somebody who's watching this video right now, like, damn, I wish I could be on the level that Colin's at. You're 25, right? Yeah. Jeez, 25 years old. This was not how I always was. Two and a yeah. half years ago, I'm 50 grand in debt, right? So I have none of the health stuff. I'm eating that freaking McDonald's, KFC, you know, I'm getting Chick-fil-A as much as I can. For me, I mean, it was a direct correlation. As I started to make money, I realized like, I wanna keep this money. I don't wanna get sick. I wanna feel good. Because yeah. I was waking up, you know, at 5 a.m. every day, going to bed at 12, only sleeping five hours, working my ass off, living off like six coffees at Starbucks. Um, you know, you do what you gotta do yeah. to get there. You know, life's not always gonna be as glamorous and, and the feeling is not always gonna be as good in the beginning stages. You just gotta understand that. Yeah. Um, it's a grind, it's a hustle. You gotta sacrifice everything. And then you make promises to yourself along the way, I will never have to feel like this again. Or I will mm -hmm. never 
wake up at this time again, you know? Um, and as you start making money, you start setting these little goals and these little pockets to invest in so you don't have to do the bullshit that you just went through. Yeah. And when I realized how much success I wanted to have and I realized that I was nowhere close to where I wanted to be, I had to do a lot of reorganizing with my environment and my friends. Um, I had to stop going out completely on the weekends. I was partying Friday, Saturday, even sometimes Sunday while I was working at a corporate job. So we'd go to the clubs, we'd go to dinners, we'd go to happy hours, whatever excuse we could get to get out of work and get our minds off of the corporate life. You know, yeah. a lot of people in corporate weren't thinking like me that there was a way out. Like that was it. You know, that was they're there, they're, they've arrived, and they're going to climb the corporate ladder and be that that job for probably 20 years. With me. I knew from like day two or three that I'm, I'm out. Like this is a temporary thing in my life and I'm gonna get out of here. I need to start sacrificing this time, this extra amazing free time I have on the weekends that I'm giving all to the clubs and to the bars, putting all my money in that stuff that's getting me nothing except a fun time, I need to sacrifice that and start investing into uh, you know mentors, uh, networking events, um, you know, courses, books, podcasts. Yeah. So I just did a massive deep dive into all personal growth and development. And, you know, I, I stopped going out on the weekend and soon enough, after I started seeing the success, not even the success, just like the fire kept yeah. burning, you know? Um, and they're telling me like Grant Cardone, you don't go out on the weekend, you sit and you work and you, and you know, I, I'm actually, going by that and I'm starting to see, okay, I'm actually understanding this real estate thing or wow, Robert Kiyosaki actually makes sense with this book. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I understand that I need to buy assets. I understand credit's important. So I'm just starting to step back and see, holy shit, there's a lot I didn't know in college and yeah. now I'm starting to understand it. Let me go deeper on this stuff. And yeah. it just became a, an overall obsession in my life. Um, and that just moved everything around. My friends, you know, were way pushed away, my, yeah. my friends back then. Um, and I found a buddy who was thinking just like me. And that's super important to have someone that's like your ride or die in that situation. Because if you don't have someone going through what you have to go through to get to where you're trying to go, if you don't have a partner or you don't have someone supporting you, I think it's very hard. Yeah. And I had one buddy and his name was Paulie. And uh, he moved out to Scottsdale with me and we both quit our corporate jobs and started everything together. So we held each other accountable every day. And that was big for me. If I didn't yeah. have him, then I wouldn't have any support at all because my parents didn't support me through it. Uh, my friends didn't support me through it. That's awesome. Yeah. Cheers, man. Cheers. So we're in Miami. Gosh, we're in your beautiful apartment. Can we see the rest of the place? So this is this is where me and Noemi chill. Uh, you know when we have friends over and stuff, watch movies. Got the Sonos throughout the house. My dad used to work for Sonos. Oh really? Um, yeah. So he was national sales manager for them. Uh, I actually made him sell all my all of Sonos stock for Bitcoin. No uh, when way. When I was at 12k. So he's done re really. He's so well happy. There. Yeah, yeah. Now he's converting his 401k. That is huge. Can we just like take a moment? How did you get your dad, who's been working at Sonos? How was like? Like six years. Okay. Yeah. How did you get him to sell his stock and buy Bitcoin? Like, how well, would we did a, someone listen to their son and just go hard into something that's so uncertain? Yeah. So he saw me quit my job, thought I was absolutely crazy. He pulled over on the side of the road and was like literally hyperventilating because I just threw everything away, he thought. And he watched me for the next six months just grind. And he saw, you know, I became a millionaire pretty quick. Yeah. And he was just like, yo, like, what's up with my son? And so <laughs> he just started listening to me. Yeah. And now he's really like, he's reading the books I'm telling him. Like, he's into everything that I do. So, so that's where your personality comes from. So you saw someone else doing it. Grant Cardone, that was in your ear, the podcast, getting started on your Instagram. You saw somebody who was finding success you start showing your dad this, he sees it too, and similar personality, got it. Trust my son, he showed me that it works, going all in, don't Conviction. need to see anything else. Conviction. Conviction. Yeah, so that's been super cool. My mom and dad love Bitcoin now. Um, so they don't have anything other than Bitcoin though, right? Like no. Uh, my dad still has a 401k, but we're currently converting that into okay. a Bitcoin IRA. Okay. So yeah, we're just going all Bitcoin because the 60-40 portfolio is going to get destroyed. Everyone yeah. in bonds and stocks is going to get decimated. Yeah. So all, you know, social security, 401ks, oh my God, got to get in Bitcoin. So. Okay. Over here, we got Noemi's 
Denise Dess. Uh, we're moving to the uh, 73rd floor. So she's gonna have her own office now. So she's okay. very excited. So you're upgrading, upgrading girl with a, with a better office space. Yep. We got the map everywhere me and her have traveled. So she wow. is, she's the black. She's black. And then we are together, we are the, uh, the blue. And then like where we've been with the same. Yeah. And then uh, the white, I believe is me. This is the, this is the spaceship, the rocket ship. This is where. All right, we get it done. let's go. Yeah, so uh, got the 10x passes here. Yep, diamond, diamond seats. Paid 10 grand a pop for those. When you go to events, why do you pay more to sit up closer? What's the purpose of paying more? Man, I mean, every it's everything, dude. Like the Bitcoin, for example. It's not. It's, it's not just about like. I just want the status. Like twenty one thousand dollars right here. I, yeah. I obviously got a better deal because I work with them through like promotions and stuff on social media. But uh, dude, like the the energy and the network you experience there. I mean, everyone in that room either has a connection that got them the ticket for cheaper, which still means they're very well connected, yeah. or they actually spent twenty grand. Yeah. So. I mean, everyone in there has got money. They understand why it's important to spend money and you're all in that same mindset. So Grant Cardone event, I mean, you know, we're sitting literally almost front row. Grant yeah. is calling out my friend Cody, you know, in the crowd, like, hey, Cody, like in front of tap. So you pay for, you know, the, the audience, you pay for, uh, you know, everyone seeing you up front and you know, you look like a baller. So yeah, it just it helps with your businesses. This looks like similar to my studio act. Yeah, so I love it. Yeah. Leverage Lifestyle is your brand, right? Yep, that's my like that's like my I would say the top of my companies. Like that's like where you start, and then there's leverage investments, and then there's leverage mining. So this all kind of originated with my first company called Credit Class. Okay. So you know I go on that trip right to Europe. I'm super inspired, and that planted a seed inside me. I want to travel the world. I want to live this lifestyle. I want to live in the nice hotels. Um, I want to do everything I just did, but I want to do it bigger and better and I want to do it more often. Yeah. Um, so how do I do that? And one of the easiest ways to do it is obviously become an entrepreneur, have your own schedule, have cash flow. But if you utilize some statuses and some credit cards and some points, you work smarter, not harder, you can save all your money and invest in Bitcoin and real estate and then travel the world for free. So I started digging into credit. And the reason why is because you get sign up bonuses. Some credit cards give you free status, so you don't actually have to stay at 30 nights at a Marriott. You just get the status for free by yeah. having the card. So I started to map out all my dream credit cards and what it would look like to have those cards and you know what the sign up bonus would be able to get me on a transfer partner uh, for a trip to the Maldives. Maybe I can get the flight for 100,000 points instead of 2 million points you know, yeah. what people would spend if you're redeeming it in the actual portal. So I started to just become a whiz at it. Um, I became obsessed. Yeah. And you know, now that obsession, uh, I wasn't just consuming it, I started to actually educate on it. I knew content from Gary V was what you needed to do. You have to start a personal brand, you have to add value to the marketplace. So all I did was I got my phone out and put it on a little tripod that cost five bucks off Amazon and I press record and I sat down, I started educating on credit. I just did one or two videos a week, nothing crazy. That simple. For a month and one month of that, got me enough notice and enough credibility in the credit travel and building income with credit space that people were like, yo, do you have a course? Can I pay you for mentorship? Yo, yo, I need this, like, please. And 30 days, 30 and people days. are already reaching out. Exactly, so 30 days and that's when the idea sprouted in my head. I need to freaking, I need to monetize this information that I'm giving out for free. I'm gonna still give it for free, but people wanna pay me for it. Yeah. And I need more money. But you took the right approach. You took the Gary Vee approach. Like, let me give value first to the marketplace. Yes. And then people will eventually start to respect that I'm giving value and they'll start asking questions I, yep. and then come to me as a resource. I read uh, Crush It by Gary Vee. Crush I it. played it on repeat on the great audio book. book. That's a great And book. man, I was like, this is it. This is how everyone's gonna live life. Like the yeah. people that are actually working smarter, not harder, are gonna quit their corporate jobs, focus on their passion, add value in the marketplace and do whatever the hell they wanna do in the world. So I sat down and I got this idea and this is like, where you put in the work for so long and you're waiting for that big break, sometimes you just get a download. Maybe you're in the shower, a thought comes in your head and it just makes so much sense. And it just came and it was like credit class. I was wow. Like, I was like, 
why is there no one on it? I look it up on Instagram, no credit class yet. Like no one's created an Instagram page that's literally teaching people about credit cards, like credit class, like college. I'm like, dude, okay, boom, submit. Sat there for four hours and I put every little piece of information on like little slides and videos and I just made the page private. This is right before Black Friday, 2019. So I know because of last year, I'm watching all these 18 year olds make a ton of money through e-commerce and course sales yeah. on Black Friday. So I'm like, ha, ah, this is a good day to launch a course. So I promote it on Instagram stories for the whole week leading up to it. And I say, Black Friday, I'm launching this thing. It's originally 500 bucks, but we're gonna mark it down to 250. So I already understood like the deal aspect, yeah. the scarcity, it's only gonna last two days. And I launched it. I had 26 people sign up in one day and I've never sold any of my own course before. All Venmos, Zells, I mean, $6,500 that day. And in one day. And I went from making that usually in a month of grinding 12 hours a day. Yeah. So doing that in one day. And that night, that was probably the happiest I've ever felt and so relieved because I knew if I just kept dumping the same amount of effort that it took me only a couple days to make this thing, I make a course, I do videos, I start traveling, start promoting, it's game over. It could happen every day. Yeah, it could happen every day. So yeah. launched that, had that massive breakthrough and uh, me and Paulie were still together and I was like, yo, we gotta start living this shit. So I instantly started uh, investing all that money back into trips now. So yeah. I, I have the credit cards, right? So that's the other thing with a course. You gotta become the expert at it first. Yeah. You can't just freaking coach people if you don't know what you're doing. Same with you. Yeah. You went back and got your the highest form of accounting that yeah. you could get and now you're credible and you know this like I've seen you recite the different codes and stuff like it's nothing. Yeah. So you are an expert and that's what I became at this. So I was so confident in my work that like it was nothing to me. It was just, you know, it was just like an average day just talking to the camera like blah, 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 blah. And everyone's like, what? Yeah. So it just became so natural. And, you know, we started traveling to L.A. on, on uh, JSX, the private flight. Thing. Yeah. I was getting them for 70 bucks for the promo rate when it first came out. Yeah, so we were taking private them to, jets. to Vegas, to L.A. And we I ran a Lambo. I'm just like going all in investing in marketing yeah. and then uh, my lease ends in December and we moved to Bali the first week of January and the first day I get to uh, Bali I meet my girlfriend on day one so another just gift I grew credit class at 350 members um, and yeah it was a multi six-figure company in like six months yeah and then uh, Got into e-commerce, everything started exploding. I found Bitcoin in that time, became a millionaire from Bitcoin in literally like six months. Yeah. Um, so I, I what, just started- What price point did you get in at Bitcoin? 5K was the first Bitcoin I bought. Yeah. Who was it that kind I of- I bought five that. to 5K. Was this all is over the all place. my money. Yeah. I don't have anything more than 25 grand at this point. This is my hard saved money. I just paid off my debt and this is all I got. So yeah. like for me, that was too scary. And then around May, after two months of conviction, of just studying Michael Saylor, podcasts, Anthony Pompliano, reading Bitcoin books, yeah, I had another download. I there had another, you go. When it said credit class, this time it said, you buy Bitcoin and you don't stop. <laughs> and I was like, okay. The like, conviction this, was there. This then. is how I'm gonna become a millionaire more than everyone else. Because everyone wanted to be a millionaire in my circle, but no one was like investing with the amount of conviction that they needed to get there. So my thought process investing was- Investing with the amount of conviction that was needed to get there. Colin, you just said it. That was powerful because when I was starting my journey in investing, I was putting in like $50, $100, $150. I'm like, no. how do people get rich? You need to crypto? buy though. Yeah. They're dumping yeah. money. Full in. Bitcoin. But I don't want... have the conviction yeah. because I didn't go to the hard place like you did and actually study. Then it got even crazier. When Bitcoin started to hit near its uh, all time high of 19,000, I knew that once it broke out of that, it was gonna just go berserk. Yeah. So I was like, I need more and I don't have enough cash flow yet. Like I'm not as invested as I wanted to So what did you do? So I, I leveraged. So I, I went negative, I went over my net worth. So I, I was 100% Bitcoin. And that's where leverage lifestyle comes in, right? So so I okay. take, I start taking out loans against my Bitcoin stack. What? And I'm so you went into debt? Again. I went in the debt again. So call, call you just got out of debt. I know, right? And I went right back in. I go to blockfi.com and I borrow a hundred grand against 20 Bitcoin or whatever it was. So I take out that loan, immediately smash by with the hundred grand. All and back then, into crypto. All right back into Bitcoin. Yeah. And then, uh, so I do that once and I'm like, okay, that's awesome. This Bitcoin price keeps going up. I did it. At Knowing a that you're going to eventually have to pay back the loan. Yeah, okay. of course. But uh, so 
Actually, I'll tell you. Okay. <laughs> so uh, that was at 13K, right? So I do that. Then it goes to like 17. I'm like, I get that urge again, that, that voice telling me you need more. Yeah. So I go and I borrow another 130K this time. And I Sorry, picked- 230K in debt. Yeah. And I picked up 10 Bitcoin with that. And then what happened next? Bitcoin goes to $64,000. And I'm looking like a pure genius, right? Um, I borrowed- Oh, it's like I'm a millionaire. Uh, yeah, multi, not Mul even one million. Multi million. Two mil, I'm in Dubai, I'm looking at my phone and it crosses the two million mark. So you're sitting down in Dubai, watching on your phone becoming a millionaire. Yeah. Can yeah. you try in the best sense to paint that day for me. Oh my God. Like this, what did that day look like? Was the Dubai sun hitting you? Were yeah. you wearing a, one of those little TVs? <laughs> what were you doing? The night before probably. But so I'm in the Marriott Dubai in the uh, Harbor. It's called the Marriott Harbor. It's like in the Marina section. Yeah. And it's one of the tallest hotels in the Marina. And I got the, the penthouse there. They actually yeah. gave me the penthouse because I have the, of all the Marriott hacks I was using, I have Ambassador Elite. Cause you had already had all the credit, all I'm, stuff planned oh, out. Yeah. So you knew how to jump yeah. the cards. I got the employee uh, discount, 50% off rooms and I'm Ambassador Elite. So I booked the standard room. I meet them there. I'm getting free breakfast, everything. They just bumped me to the very top. I got two balconies. I have three bedrooms in this thing massive so i'm just sitting there bitcoin hits 64k i had a TikTok that just hit 5 million views on the way over there from my emirates flight i like did it it went viral so, so my hot. TikTok's going i just got verified on TikTok. i'm looking at my bitcoin and it crosses the 2 million mark and i just go on my balcony man and i'm just like i f did it like <laughs> you know i had that quick like you know and then it was right back to work but you gotta sell right back your to wins. work yeah um and, and eventually you know it it went from that high but then what happened bitcoin went to 29k yeah, it, it took so it, so then i went to a million so i lost a million dollars and Very i had fast. to stomach that was Bitcoin going to zero? Was I wrong about everything? Should I have sold the top? Should you have pulled everything out? Right, so you start thinking and second guessing, but once again, my conviction's so strong that I'm gonna be completely honest. When Bitcoin hit 29K, I was not freaking out about paying my loan off because I was about to get liquidated. I was not telling people to sell. I was not selling. I bought more at 29K. So I have these loans out. I am literally should be paying off the loan. And instead of paying off the debt, I'm buying more Bitcoin. When do, Colin, when do we pay off the debt? Like, that's the one thing I'm yeah. thinking about. Like, so, when did it get paid off? So this is the Michael Saylor method, and I learned from him, you know, Michael Saylor. Yeah. Saylor. So basically what you want to do with debt is you want to push it as far off as possible. So defer, if you defer. can afford the minimum monthly payments with the interest, which for me was about two grand a month, because yeah. it's at 9%, 10%, and I have about 220,000 in loans. Um, I could afford that. So when the time came, that BlockFi is knocking on my door saying, hey, Colin, loans due. Because with BlockFi, you owe the whole lump sum after one year. There's no like you're playing like principal. Him. It's like, yo, you pay interest every month, we're making that money, and then you're gonna pay the whole loan off. But you can refi the loan. Oh, so you refi it. So I refied it and I pulled out another 100 grand because my collateral appreciated double. Okay, so, so you were able to borrow against some of the collateral. So I borrowed, so I basically said, hey, you know, I'll refi it because my collateral went so up again. They gave me a hundred grand. I paid for my tax related expenses with my hundred thousand for free debt. And I tax sold, free money sold that you just Bitcoin. borrowed against to pay your taxes. So I knew I had to go all in. I knew I had to take massive risk. And my net worth, man, went from literally nothing to like three mil. You know, one Bitcoin started rising up again and I bought a lot of Bitcoin at, when I went to 29K all the way back up. Yeah. And now I'm buying full coins. Yesterday I bought a full coin at 46K. So yeah. I'm never stopping. I just keep buying and everyone's always waiting for the perfect time, waiting for the dips. And I'm just every day. Money in, money in, feeding the beast. Bitcoin is, is everything to me. It made me who I am. So I've always educated for free for the past two years. Like I'm, I'm putting hours a day into my educational content to help people understand Bitcoin and buy it. But I never had a product related to it. Yeah. Um, so what I did was I said, you know what? Like how can I be a part of this and help grow the network 
make a little bit of money myself and also just make people money themselves and mining came in the picture i met up with my friend connor from home found out he was mining for a year his dad owns an industrial flashlight company that has military contracts with energy at four cents a kilowatt they have uh you know people that actually know how to do immersion cooling already because they do it on their flashlight equipment they have on-site electricians everything was just perfect for it. It just fell right into the place. Another relationship. Another relationship. Leveraged. So, yeah, leverage Connor. He does operations in New Jersey. He understands mining. He's certified with Bitmain and all that stuff. And, um, and that's exactly what I did. I will focus on marketing and sales and my brand and my audience I've cultivated from Leverage Lifestyle and we'll funnel people into mining. Yeah. So we launched a week ago. Um, we're, we've already done 120 grand in sales. We have about 11 clients. In one week? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, one week. Woo, man. These views. Can we walk on, on the balcony a little bit and sure, see a little yeah. bit of, let's, let's check of, it out. of what you wake up to? Yeah, let's go. This is the 32nd floor. So this is 32. I'm moving to the 73rd floor. So double the height of this. I got two balconies, not one. You have two balconies on yeah. your next up place? Options, bro. Options, that's right. So we see the sunrise and the sunset now. So your new place has this view of sunrise and then you can walk all the way around it's, you gotta side. go inside, go to the back, and then there's a whole nother section with the balcony that way. And you can see, the, you can sunset. see the sunset. Yeah. What made you choose Miami over California or over Arizona? Or I lived in Arizona for five years through college. I wanted to get out and see new things. Yeah. Um, I love Miami for being close to my family. They're in Jersey. It's only a two-hour flight. Okay. Um, and I just love the pace here. It's still East Coast, what I know growing up and uh, is very diverse. I mean, Bitcoin capital, I would say, of America. For sure. All the events are here. Art Basel, Bitcoin Miami, uh, Grant Cardone lives down the block. We're just around heavy hitters. All One of your biggest here. mentors, one, one of, my of my biggest big, mentors. I'm around him constantly. I mean, yeah. Ryan Secco and Gary Brecca, his two biggest partners spoke at my event. Yeah. So like, I'm there. Ryan like, Secco is coming. Grant Cardone's pilot. Pilot and partner and in business Cardone partner. Capital, yep. Yep, Colin. It's been absolutely amazing getting to check out your spot. Dude, I'm so happy you uh, you came through. This is yeah. incredible. Let's, uh, I heard you're a meat eater. Can we go get some steak? Can you take me to one of your favorite places? What does that look like? So you got in at $400. $400, don't eat. I threw in 20 grand. I was like, whatever, I'll do some shit. Money, threw some money on XRP, threw some money on ETH. So I already knew like these had more potential to 10, 20X, but I always knew that Bitcoin could not be manipulated, it's not centralized, doesn't have a founding class, it's just 21 million. So yeah. I was like, this is really it? Yeah. I'm gonna f around a little and play the casino. And I did, <laughs> I'm gonna and play I the casino. Next, yeah. 20K to 200,000 in like a year. It was a year for you. It was a year, yeah. And but the finite amount of Bitcoin is what attracts you to Bitcoin more? Yeah, it's a savings account. Okay. So like having Bitcoin, having a cap supply and not being able to be controlled, there's never been anything in human history that's ever been like that. Yeah. So why are we all turning our heads and playing all coin casinos when this thing goes up 150% annualized every single year? When you look at it in a log chart, the thing is just, just goes up. Bro. For me, I just don't want to hold that as a currency or an asset as a savings device. Yeah. That's my thing. I'm not a gambler and I'm not a trader. So like Bitcoin just makes sense for me. And if it makes sense for you to trade, it makes sense for you to be on DeFi and be doing lending like that, and buying NFTs, then you need Ethereum for that. So yeah. I'm not a hater on it. It's yeah. just for me, I'm focused on building massive wealth. And I know Bitcoin's the vehicle that's gonna get me there. And Ethereum's kind of just playing around. Yeah. Do you likely. feel like your Bitcoin mining company is a company that you see yourself holding on to? This is like my baby, or is it something that I can see growing and eventually selling and possibly even going public? What's the fun in selling? Like, yeah. All the richest people in the world only buy and they never sell. And I, I know that for a fact. So like, I'm never selling any of my Bitcoin. I'll borrow against them and use debt forever. Okay. And that's what I've done pretty successfully with watch trading real estate. I just leverage my Bitcoin to borrow fiat. Yeah. And then I invest it in assets. But you started out in debt, like, and you got yourself out of debt. How do you feel like going back into debt to continue to build your wealth. Like, how does that feel for you? Yeah. And that's been a part of your wealth building now. Yeah, it's a different debt, man. It's good debt. So I was in debt that was tied to liabilities. Mm. I was in debt that was tied to student loans, my car that was a piece of shit. Um, you know, my rent, uh, credit card bills, yeah. personal credit cards that I was, you know, it was not tied to a real estate or it wasn't tied to Bitcoin. 
when I take out loans now against my Bitcoin, I'm buying more Bitcoin. I'm buying real estate that I know I'm going to get a 20% return on in a year. Um, you know, I'm Plus buying, tax savings. I'm buying watches that are appreciating. You know, I, I made 45 grand off a watch wearing it for three months. So like now I, I understand when I take out debt, I buy an asset. That's okay. it. You know, you don't buy Gucci, Louis Vuitton, and you know, fun items and go to bottle service with your debt. You yeah. Do that with your passive income, as you know. Yep. So as long as you can do the fun shit with your passive income, and you can keep buying appreciating assets with your debt, then you're just going to keep the snowball rolling. Yeah. You're going to acquire more good debt tied to strong appreciating assets. You're going to pay for all your fun shit with the cash flow that the assets are spitting out. That's right. That's exactly what we're doing on this trip right now. Exactly. This is wild. Where am I? Where am I? Ladies and gentlemen, the moment you've been waiting for.